Did you just buy a new CNC router or are you just looking to install a new supplemental waste board? Not bad, not bad. Now you. Chris from Full Steam Designs here. On today's episode, we're going to go over how to make and surface a new waste board. We're going to go over how to make and square new guides to that waste board and to your machine. And then we're also going to go over a few different methods of securing your workpiece. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get to work. I'm going to start out by removing my old supplemental waste board. This is a great upgrade to any machine and in fact I think it's one of the first things you should ever do. The first thing we need to do is figure out how big our waste board can be. We're going to do that by jogging our X and Y axis as far as they'll go in either direction and just making a mark. Alright, so I've moved this back as far as I can in the Y direction and I'm going to come down a little bit with the Z. And you can see that I'm using just a, a fine pointed bit, anything will work, of a, a V-bit. Um, this is a 1 32nd ball mill. And I'm just going to come in a little bit, maybe about an inch, and I'm going to make a mark there. Alright, now I've moved it over as far as it'll go on that x-axis all the way to the right. Um, and I'm just using my rapid positioning screen for these positions. So again, we're going to come down on the Z just to get that bit a little bit closer. And again, I'm going to come in about an inch and I'm just going to make a mark there. Now we're going to go ahead and do that one more time by moving to our X position all the way to the left. <laughs> And just like before, I'm going to be coming in about an inch. All right, now in the front, our uh, biggest concern isn't how far it can travel. Uh, what the problem here is that we've got this metal guide rail. Um, so what I want to do is come about three inches away from that. So I'm just going to use a tape measure and make a mark. Now that we have our lines all laid out, all I have to do is measure the distance between them and that'll give us the size that we need to make our waste board. So we're going to call that 27 and we're going to call that 30. Now I'm just drilling the holes and using some drywall screws to secure this to my original waste board. So now we're just jumping into Carbide Create and setting this up. Um, I have my uh, job set up as 32 by 32, which is the biggest it can be. And I'm just setting my material up to be a half inch larger than the uh, actual waste board that I made. We're setting this up to cut 50 thousandths of an inch. And I'm just going to come in and add a new tool. I'm using a uh, inch and a quarter, just two flute end mill. And after installing that, just make sure that you select it. We can change our depth per pass and our step over. And we can definitely turn this feed rate up quite a bit. Just check our rendering out to make sure that everything looks the way we think it should. And then we'll go ahead and save that G-code. Used a few different surfacing bits in the past. 
Uh, this is actually a Freud uh, just mortising bit. Um, and it actually ends up working pretty well, and it was the cheapest thing that I could find on Amazon at the time. I think it was only about 20 bucks, so I put a link in the description to show what bit I used. But when I'm setting this up, I'm um, moving it about a quarter inch, so, so it hangs over about a quarter inch on the left and the bottom. Um, and that's just going to make sure that I cover this whole wasteboard. Once you finish surfacing this, it's a good idea to check out the finish. If you're getting some really bad ridges, you may need to tram your router. Uh, the ones that I'm getting really aren't too bad. You can kind of see them a little bit in the video, but you really hardly feel them. Um, so at this time, I'm not worried about it, and I'm just going to keep moving forward. But I am going to make a follow-up video where I'm going to teach you guys how to make a tool and tram your router. So be looking for that in the future. Just like with the wasteboard, I'm just using drywall screws to secure the guides. Um, I roughly squared the wasteboard to the machine and I'm just squaring the guides against that. This next step is very important. Uh, you have to square the guides to your machine. I'm going to do this by manually jogging the machine uh, along the X and Y axis. I'm just using on an eighth inch bit, so I'm not removing much material. I'm also cutting into the waste board a few tenths of an inch. This will allow for a place for chips to fall so they won't prevent us from pushing our workpiece up against the guides. And if you're using a touch plate, you may need to remove some additional material down in this lower left-hand corner of your uh, wasteboard and guides. And you can see how it should look in this final picture here. All right, so now we've got our new wasteboard installed. We've surfaced it. We've also installed our new guides and we've uh, squared them to the machine. So let's talk about how we can go about securing material. There's a lot of different ways to do this and we're just gonna go over a few of them. One method that I think works really well is just screwing it right down to your waste board. Um, this works great in uh, perimeter cuts, stuff like if you wanted to make like a bottle opener like this. And all you do is just square it up to the machine and I use these drywall screws. I like pre-drilling my holes first and I'll just screw it right down to the waste board. Another great method is to use CA glue and an activator and masking tape. To do this, you just rip off, off a couple of pieces. I like putting my glue on the piece that's on the waste board. And then I'll spray my activator right on this piece here. Push it down, hold it for a couple seconds. And that's pretty secure. Now when you are ready to get that up, I kind of just twist and it will break that bond. And you can just peel the tape off. If you don't want to be bothered with having to use uh, CA glue and stuff like that, this double-sided carpet tape also works really well. So again, you just cut a piece of this off. Peel the backing off. And then again, just kind of square it up to your guides, press down, 
and that's very secure again. My go-to method for securing work pieces is scrap clamps. I just make these out of various pieces of scrap wood. I have all different sizes. I use different materials. Kind of just use whatever I have around. And all I do is drill a hole in them and I use them to clamp down on the workpiece like this. I'll just run a screw right through there. These angle ones work really well. Because the nice thing about this is, is that it's not only pushing down on the material, but it's also pushing towards your guides. So it's a really nice, secure, snug fit. It's important that when you make these clamps, your grain is running in this direction here. Uh, you don't want it running parallel to what you're going to be clamping because it'll uh, be prone to snapping there. So just keep that in mind when you're making these. I've been putting a lot of work into my website lately. If you head over there, make sure you check out the Maker's Resources page. Um, you'll find some videos that I've done and the PNGs for like the wavy flags and a bunch of SVGs that will help you get started on some projects. Um, I'd really appreciate you if you guys would share this link with people too. Uh, if you appreciate what I'm doing and you'd like to support me on a more personal level, please consider checking out my Patreon page. That's going to help support future projects and resources like my webpage so I can keep providing great content to you guys. I really appreciate a like and subscribe, and if you head over to this next video, you're going to learn how to use some of the SVGs from my website to design this really awesome Marine Corps flag. Thanks, and I'll see you over there.